Hello, hello, and welcome back to... I almost said Echo. I'm so sorry. We're playing Burroughs. That's a... It's a different game. It just so happens to have a really cute maned wolf. It's... <laughs> Whatever. <clears throat> uh, we walked a few blocks in and find a public phone booth. Mark throws in a nickel and whips out a little notebook full of phone numbers. What are you feeling? French? Italian? Maybe Asian fusion? What is that like in the 60s? Curious. Uh, French sounds good. It's the only thing I'm really qualified to judge. Eddie and Jean cooked up a mean Cajun, Cajun fry every Sunday after church, but every now and then they'd uh, try some authentic French recipes from cookbooks. Hello? Y <laughs> oh. To Google. <laughs> oh, I got a new follower. That's interesting. Um, I they will clear out those notifications, so I'll forget to read them later. Y V O N N E pronunciation. Okay. No, I don't care about YouTube ads. Fuck you. Just give me the how to pronounce. Fuck you, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> thank you for giving me a platform. Bonjour, this is Julian, the Frenchman who makes French pronunciation videos here on YouTube, and we are looking at how to pronounce this female given name of French origin. We're going to be looking at how to pronounce it in French for reference as well as in English. In French, this is normally said as Yvonne. 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 In English, consequently, this is normally pronounced as Yvonne. Yvonne. <clears throat> Hello? Yvonne's? Yes, it's Mark. I'm... Hmm? What do you mean there's a private party? I've been dining with you for eight years now. Surely you can find me a... Excuse me? You want to say that one again? Oh. Oh, really? Well, up yours too, pal. He slams the receiver down so hard it rattles the uh, windows and storms out, leaning against the booth with his arms crossed, uh, scrambling uh, to pull, uh, pull out another cigarette. No dice? <laughs> Can you believe they couldn't get us a single table all day? If our Reynard had picked us, he would have found us something. Had picked up. Flick, drag, exhale. No clue who this jackass was either. Must have been some new hire who didn't get the memo. Hmm. Well... They just lost a loyal customer. Come on, it's not worth blacklisting the damn place over. It wouldn't be the first place I blacklisted, or rather, who blacklisted me. But I guess you're right. We still have to eat, don't we? Uh, I could try the uh, blue uh, bugalo, bugalo, bungalow in Central Park. Uh, the idea of sitting through another angry uh, call fills me with dread. I hook an arm around Mark and tug him along, and I start to walk. What are you... Let's just look around. We can try something new. I don't know anything around here. Yeah, something new. Uh, where's your spirit of adventure? I left it at home. I ignore him whining and stiff. Ah, oh, Mark, stop being so attractive. Um, <clears throat> hopping my uh, strongest sense can uh, find us some grum. Uh, 
<clears throat> I was, uh, it was hard to smell past Mark's smokiness, but eventually something stuck out. Savory, fried, creamy. I follow my nose and end up at a, a row of venue shop, various shops that form a, a functional, a, what, 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 I'm not even reading anymore, a uh, large, um, lunch, luncheonette? Okay. Uh, gruff day, uh, labors, okay, are waiting in line to, uh, <clears throat> grab a quick bite, as long as a few, along with a few businessmen. Mark's basically, basically a ragdoll at this point, and, uh, and I pull him over, trying to find the source of the smell, store by store. I quickly find it, Donna's polished kitchen. <laughs> Let's try this! I've never had Polish food before. From this dump? I don't want us to get sick. He says that a little too loudly. A, a few shop owners shooting annoying glances our way. I wince and try to um, smile back to let them know I'm on their side. Where, where is this snobbiness in Mark coming from? Did he forget uh, the little hole in the wall he took me to yesterday? I see him tapping his foot eagerly to leave. And trust me, the best food I always is always from small places like this. Look at all these people, it can't be that bad. All right. I order a few, um, pierogies and some kielbasa to start with. Uh, they sound the most familiar, and I don't want to uh, risk getting something uh, risky when Mark's being so difficult. All right, uh, that'll be 185. No oh, shit! I whip out my wallet. Uh, there's about 70 cents uh, and a free drink a voucher for um, Jean's bar that would be beyond expired by now. Uh, one sec. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, can I borrow two dollars? Sorry. Uh, sure. Mark reaches into his poke pocket and uh, hands me a few crumpled bills. There's at least six in here. I guess it's just spare change for him. I grab what I need and run back to uh, pay for our orders before sitting down across from him. I should have guessed you, uh, I should have guessed you, uh, you wouldn't have any cash on you. My bad. It's alright. Hmm. Hey. Yeah? <laughs> you want to know something funny? Sure. I'm actually having a great time. How? Today's been a complete disaster. No, it hasn't. Do you know why? Enlighten me. I gently boop his nose and giggle as his ears flick wildly in confusion. Because <laughs> I'm spending it with you, wise guy. That's enough to make you almost, uh... <laughs> that's enough to make up for um, almost giving you a heart attack. Even a shitty day can uh, be fun if you spend it with a friend. <laughs> so, you really think of us as friends, then? I hear uh, his tail thump against the bench as it uh, wags fer uh, ferociously. I do, but he... <laughs> uh, but you'll have to uh, make it through this meal, or I'll start questioning my taste in uh, acquaintances, deal? Okay, I'll try. For you! <laughs> That's the mark I recognize. He shifts moods so quickly, staying on his good side is going to uh, be key to, <clears throat> to this all working out. A few minutes later, a man bringing out, uh, bringing our food on plastic trays. The preservation, the presentation is lacking, but it smells incredible. Six cheese pierogies, each with sour cream and applesauce for dipping, and two long coiled sausages. My mouth is watering already. We dig in, and I fall in love immediately. Savory fried dough with salty cheese, sweet caramelized onions. That's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. So okay, <clears throat> I like pierogies, right? Like they're they're good. I actually have to go hunting for ones that don't have onions in them. <laughs> I go to the store, I look at the ingredients, and it's like second or third like ingredient onions and I'm just like fuck uh, 
and I hit a, um, and a hint of sour from the cream makes the perfect combination for a hearty meal during the harsh winter months. I work my way over to the kibasa and am surprised by the smoky flavor and slight heat. Nothing close to a and dolly fuck we're learning things today okay let's uh that's the wrong app uh google and do how is it pronounced though andouille sausage and do we Why is there L? Undoey sausage. Okay. Nothing close to Andouille, or uh, anything in a Cajun kitchen, but uh, enough to be uh, appreciated. I hear, <clears throat> I hear Mark moaning in his into his food, clearly echoing my sentiment. Holy fuck! This is good, and it was so cheap. I can't stop eating. Oh, Poland, I'm so sorry about World War II. You deserve better. <laughs> I have no idea what that means, but yes, justice for Pol- Okay, I'm gonna... Yeah. Uh... I, I actually can't deal with this dialogue. It's so good. I have no idea what that means, but yes, justice for Poland. I almost get up to order, order more, but I don't want to get sick of something I, so lovely. We quickly uh, polish off our plates and leave the trays at the front. The cashier gives us a knowing smirk, having witnessed our religious experience. I thank him and walk walk out, bellies full and moods greater, uh, greatly improved. I check the clock and a on a nearby lamppost and see it's um only four. The lights already, the lights already starting to dim, and I feel pretty tired having been on my feet the whole day. I hear Mark yawn and imagine he slept even less than I did probably having been woken up by me after I wandered to his bedroom during the mid during the nightmare. That nightmare. Hey, feeling tired yet? <clears throat> yeah, a little. Might have been just the food, but I'm about ready to head home. Me too. Your couch is sounding real good right now. Hmm, it does sound good. I spot a subway station and recall seeing the same line not so far from his apartment. Why don't we take the train? I'm curious about the subway. He looks at the station, then back at me, his nose scrunched up in disgust. Ugh, I don't think that's a good idea. I mean, just about anybody can ride those things. Remember your little encounter and <clears throat> with the friendly fasher? It's how most of New York gets around, no? Surely it's... Great, you're with me now. You don't have to put yourself in, in dangerous situations anymore. I'll get us a cab. But he ignores my protest and walks to the curb. He gets ignored by a few cabs and starts to get pissed off again. Oh, no, <laughs> oh, Mark. God damn it. I guess it wasn't uh, the cigarettes after all. I thought we made some progress, but all it takes is one little mishap and uh, to set him off. And when he's like that, he says things that are completely out of character. Especially that comment about people who ride the trains. He was speaking so charitably about the homeless yesterday. Now he doesn't um, want to risk riding in the same car as one. Did he reach out to me for another reason? Was that whole thing an act to gain my trust? I mean... Kind-hearted or not, you don't bring strangers home with a good, without a good reason. And so readily accept all the odd things I said by accident. Uh, surely that must have set off some red flags by now. Twenty minutes pass and the sun's practically set. 
He manages to um, finally hail us a taxi after working through a few cigarettes while um, packing in, pacing in circles angrily. Oh. I reluctantly scoot next to Mark as he's uh, sternly given the uh, cabby directions. I start to zone out, the calm purr of the engine putting me into a trance once again. Mark's voice, now hoarse from yelling, begins to fade out. I don't know what it is about the long... Okay... <clears throat> Wonderful. Uh, I walk across the damp, mossy uh, moorland guided by moonlight. It's a cold night, and the fireflies seem curts uh, curtsy uh, at me before... Um, seem to curtsy at me before uh, continuing their intricate dance. I use my staff to pull myself up onto a nearby ledge. The tiny bells uh, adorned it softly, echoing throughout the clearing. The sky is clear of, <clears throat> of glistening stars. Is full of glistening stars. No, excuse me. I sit on my newly found perch, gazing upwards at the beauty the Great Mother has uh, provided us with. Suddenly, my whiskers twitch and I sense chaos rising in the distance. The trees are muttering to one another. Something is wrong. I pull myself up onto my staff and sniff the air. Fire. It's coming from the south, down by the loud, lo luge? That, that's a good sign. I, wake up, we're back home. Who, who says this line? Is this inside of Gray's head? Uh, I got a slight uh, crick in my neck. I slept a lot harder than intended. I'm surprised Mark didn't wake me up this time. I lazily follow him back into his apartment and sprawl out on the couch, desperately desperate to decompress from the roller coaster of the tour. Mark hangs up our coats and heads to the bathroom, leading me to relax alone. He hasn't spoken a word since we got back. Is he angry with me? At himself? I hear the shower turn on. Guess I have some time to myself. The clock ticks away, and I feel like a kid waiting for his mom to pick him up from a play date. Only I have nowhere else to go. With si if si uh, I wish Simon was here. Uh, she will always knew how to keep things lively, even during awkward moments. She refused to have a bad time, and could uh, defuse any argument. Even the explosive ones with me and Et uh, used to have. She, <clears throat> she had no stake in our relationship at all, but still took it upon herself to salvage our friendship, even after what I put her through. I wonder if she knew I kept seeing Et after our breakup. I'd get butterflies in my stomach every time we met up with her after um, sneaking, a, sneaking a quick fuck behind a work shed. Partly because I knew what we were doing was bad in the long run. Partly because I knew she thought our friendship was strong enough to keep us together even after our affair. And to think, Christine uh, would have ended up stuck with all this uh, emotional baggage should I uh, have gone along with that farce of a marriage my father put together. I don't want to think about that. What to do? I could always rub one out. Oh my god. <laughs> Gray. <clears throat> Mark's still in the shower. I don't know how much time I have. I rub my <laughs> I rub my hand over my junk and sink back into the couch, relaxing my muscles and take a deep breath. <sighs> it feels so taboo to be in someone's living room. Should I stop? Why would you give me the option? Like, it makes me just want to do this, just to see what happens. And I will. Fuck it. I haven't gotten off in days. <sighs> just have to be sure not to make a big mess. I gently massage my cock over my pants and start to get hard. The rough fabric rubs against the, uh, the head, 
and I and I moan a little, I'm biting down on my um, other hand to stifle my voice. I'd been depressed for so long, I couldn't even get hard when I wanted to. I can finally feel myself coming back to life, my senses returning. Everything feels so intense and new. I rub one, rub over it again, and I feel a warm trickle of pre-leak out. I didn't want to uh, stain my pants in an obvious spot. I guess I shouldn't lose them. Just as I start to um, unbutton my fly, I hear the bathroom door swing open and the uh, plop of wet paw against the linoleum. Shit, shit, shit. I grab a pillow and quickly cover my crotch uh, just as Mark enters the room wearing a cute little little robe again. Whew. Uh, sorry about that. I just... Hey, you all right? Uh, never better. Why? Oh, no reason. You looked a little flustered. Do I? Weird. Did you want to jump in yourself? Water's still nice and hot. Oh, uh, thanks, but it's still a little early for me. I took one a few days ago. Musky uh, critters like possums don't really need to wash head to toe too often. The oils our body produce keep us pretty balanced, and it takes a lot of, <clears throat> it takes a lot for us to really stink. As long as I wash the parts that matter daily, you'd never know the difference. Of course, that's assuming you only stick around other possums. Edian always said he could smell me from a thousand places, a thousand paces, and um, even gave me a bar of soap as a joke birthday gift one year. Which is funny, since he can't uh, keep his uh, snout away from my ass. I look up at Mark, and he nods, seemingly not disgusted at all. Ah, huh, makes sense. Trust me, I'd let you know if I thought you needed one. Thanks. It's hard to argue with uh, how other species will take it. He chuckles and walks over to the kitchen, grabbing some wine glasses out of the cabinet. You're not the first possum I've met, trust me. New York has every species you can imagine. You get used to everyone doing their own thing. He bends down and I, head, uh, and I hear the clink of glasses as he grabs a bottle of wine from somewhere. Besides, I enjoy a little uh, extra spice every now and then. <laughs> you smell good, Gray. I kick, um, I blush and kick my feet against the couch playfully. Well, you smell pretty good too. Uh, did you put cologne on again right after the shower? <laughs> nope. Uh, they sell a uh, bath set of that scent, so I use the soap that came with it. I appreciate his attention to detail in the animal world. Having a signature scent is always good to stick out among your peers. I uh, I bet that drives that that drive for individuality helps him get to where he is now. Everything about Mark is just so Mark. He uncocks the bottle and sets it um, sets it out to uh, breathe before sauntering back over to me. I figured we uh, we'll give it twenty minutes or so. Shame I couldn't fit a, a proper wine rack in here. But, uh, <clears throat> but they, uh, stack nicely under the sink. I'm not that picky with wine. I left home before I could ever try that stuff, uh, try the, uh, nice stuff. So, you came from money after all? I had a feeling. I lean back with my hands behind my head with a sigh. I'm not thrilled to be talking about my family, but it'd come up eventually. <laughs> yeah, old money. But I gave that up years ago. Ah, oh, must have uh, ha must have been for a good reason then. It was, <clears throat> it was. Mark, you know I am not from around here. Well, yeah, New Orleans in nineteen uh, twenty-eight, if I'm correct. Well, yeah, well, not exactly. I used to live north of the city. Ever hear of Oakfield Plantation? He shakes his head. My family owned it for generations. I grew up in the manor there. We had a full uh, custodial staff, cooks, groundskeepers, anything you could imagine. Hmm, so pretty, uh, something pretty nasty must have happened to you to leave. It's not that simple, it's more like... I realized our livelihood was only possible because my grandfather owned slaves. Everything I used to think was beautiful suddenly looked dirty, corrupted. What did you do? I tried to tell my sister how I felt. She usually stuck it out for me, but... Nobody in the family would listen. 
They were too concerned with our reputation. They were worried I would cause a big stink, go against the, um, pol politics of our conglomerate. So my father's solution was to force me to marry the daughter of the old, the oil baron. He threatened me, he threatened to cut me off completely if I didn't. Wow, uh, did you even know the girl? No, and it wasn't uh, done out of love, of course. It would help the uh, company's upcoming merger. I was content with staying a bachelor if it meant our family line wouldn't, would die out one day. So you ran. His words stung a little, though his tone was more remorseful than outright judgmental. I left before I was forced to play into my father's hand. It wasn't an easy decision. I feel Mark wrapping an arm around me again. It feels a little inappropriate after the last comment. <laughs> Color me impressed. You stood up for yourself. That's a commendable act. <laughs> I feel like he's babying me. I could tell from a glance you were a special boy. And do I know how to pick him? Uh, right. I can't keep doing this with him. I need to know something. I gently push him, his arm off of me and look him in the eye. Mark. Hmm? Why did you let me come stay with you? He looks at me dumbfounded and blinks for a few seconds, unsure of how to answer. Uh, um, you look like you needed help. I have the means, so... And those bums we saw yesterday, they didn't need help? He crosses his arms and looks at me stern, the corner of his mouth twitching. The ones that were making fools of themselves in front of the whorehouse? Yeah, they needed help. Professional help. That's not the point. What about me made you trust me right away? I, I can't really put my finger on it. What's the point in asking this now? I don't understand how any of this could uh, seem normal to him. It's important because I need to know if I can trust you. He scoffs, stands up, pacing around the couch. Trust me? What have I done? Great. If you're uncomfortable, I'm sorry. Just, just tell me what I did. I can apologize. No, no, it's not like that. It's just... Uh, damn it. How can I make you understand that? Understand what? That it's dangerous to bring a stranger home where I live by myself? That you could be taking advantage of my kindness? Mark. That you've had every opportunity to rob me, kill me, rape me, and I have, uh, and I've had only m had myself to blame. Well, guess what? I know. I know this is fucking stupid. Please don't yell at me. I'm. But if someone had just done that for, done that for Joshua, I. Okay. If if I had just. <laughs> He crumpled onto the couch and started sobbing in his hands. I awkwardly reached out to comfort him, but retracted, but retract, unsure of where our boundaries lie right now. I'm sorry, I want to help. I just don't know what to do. Please, tell me what's going on. He wipes his nose on his arms and takes a few deep breaths before shakily replying. No, you were right. You should know why. I didn't want to talk about it. But it happened three years ago. I had a brother, Josh. He wasn't great at much. School, work, girls. It always turned out the same with him. Oh, I like this music. <clears throat> Probably turn it up just a little bit. So that you can appreciate it. <clears throat> Our parents aren't a... Uh, uh, patient people. They saw one son excelling and the other one a, a, being a drain on their resources, on society. I nodded. I could easily relate, remembering how adept Jules was uh, to playing her part, her role to the, in the family, while I barely trailed behind. Even though he, he was fucked up, I loved him. I mean, we're family. We're supposed to take care of each other, right? Yeah, in theory. He clears his throat and grips his knees tightly, steeling himself for what's to come next. He'd always hung around the wrong crowd. Our folks didn't like him bringing his friends home since they'd smoke and drink all night. I 
it didn't it didn't help that he was stealing their money to buy pot. One night, they had just had it. They kicked him out with only his shirt on his back. Jesus, what did you do? His ears lower with a gaze, and he looks and he looks away. I didn't do anything. I had been living on my own for years and had no idea what was going on with him. Parents didn't care to mention it to me either. Oh. I found out a few months later, when he surprised me in the lobby. He had a ton of... He lost a ton of weight, and I could tell that he was, uh... Was uh, using something stronger than pot. So I took him in, cleaned him up, kept him fed. It, I was just happy to have my little brother back in my life. I even took him to the museum. He said he was proud of me. I wish I had said it back. Not long after well, <clears throat> that he reconnected with those friends, and they got him hooked on speed. We were fighting one night. I said some things I shouldn't have. And he walked out on me. On his own accord, of course. I found out about his passing on New York's uh, New Year's morning a week later. Oh my god, I'm, I'm sorry. He wipes a final tear away from his uh, pinky and smiles. I'm the one who should be sorry. I didn't want to put all of that on you. I move closer and place a hand on his knee. No, I'm glad you did. I understand now. You really reminded me of him at, at his best. I guess that's why. Seeing you out there like that, it felt like I'd be letting Josh die again. You didn't let him die. You did whatever you could to keep him alive, more than your parents did. I felt especially sore hearing about yet another case of shitty parenting. I couldn't, I can't imagine not caring my, if my uh, child lived or died. Those people deserve eternal damnation if they, if there ever was such a thing. I stand up and head to the kitchen. Mark flips around with a uh, confused woof. Gray? If there was ever a conversation that needed to be followed by wine, it's this one. I pour us two heavy glasses and walk, walk over. We toast and I close my eyes to take a long, uh, com contemplative, yes, I can read, a uh, sip. It's, a f it's fabulous wine, as expected. I hear Mark gulp the entire glass down and I shrug. It's been that kind of day. Suddenly, he surprises me with a big hug. He buries his head into my shoulder, and I feel his... Uh, I feel warm tears soak through my shirt. I'm so... so sorry. For what? You're my guest. I shouldn't have made you feel uncomfortable. This whole day was... I, I gently push his snout, uh, snout up and press my forehead to his, looking at his, his gentle amber eyes. I told you, I'm your friend, not your guest, Mark. I... Before I can finish, he plants his muzzle upon mine and locks me into a tender kiss. I taste the wine on his lips with a hint of ash. I'm so shocked that I can't pull away at first. I lean into it, uh, careful not to spoil my <laughs> spill my drink. The fur on his snout is gritty, but not enough to be irritating. His stubby whiskers trickle against mine, tickle against mine. His breath is hot, and he moan <laughs> moans into my mouth. I place a hand on his chest and grab a fistful of sh soft, shaggy fur. I slowly move my fingers <laughs> down towards his nipples, knowing they're hidden in the sea of orange. I felt my target and feel a uh, shudder run through his body. He responds by carelessly, by caressing the back of my neck, uh, using the other hand to slowly unbutton my shirt. Time slows as we make out. His long canine tongue dances with mine, and I feel something that firm rub against my leg. He's getting hard, and so am I. I tap his shoulder and pull back slowly, a string of saliva connecting our lips. W what's wrong? Nothing. This is just a little fast. 
Oh, right. Of, of course. He sits up, straightens his robe out, strategically covering his uh, lap with a, with extra fabric. How embarrassing. The wine must have. Mark, it's okay. Uh, I liked it. His ears perked up. His He cocks his head curiously. Really? I rub his head, messing, uh, mussing up his mane. Yes, but you're my friend first and foremost. I want to take things slowly and get to know you better before we move the, uh, goalposts any further. Hmm. Yes, I, I'd like that. I kiss him on the, on the forehead and give him a hug. I haven't felt this way about someone in a long time. What about with Eddie? Uh, there's electricity in the air. The thrill of not knowing where this will lead. The sweet moment is interrupted by the sound of growling stomach. Marks this time. He chuckles and rubs his belly. Guess it's about time, that time again. I'd say we worked up an appetite. <clears throat> he reaches behind me and grabs a phone. The thick cord... Uh, coiled cable hanging around his shoulders like one of Simon's feather boa. <clears throat> oh, that's that's a little loud. I like it, though. <clears throat> I think I'll take a, a note out of your book, uh, Pizza. I love you. Oh, I love you. I lo we laugh and order a large pie to go with the drinks. We spend the rest of the night recounting our days between greasy bites of dough and polish off the bottle of wine before cracking open a second. I never expected Mark to be so forward. Maybe it comes with the times. I used to assume most men are off the table, strictly for my own safety. I suddenly feel a lot more at ease knowing I can be myself while staying with Mark. As I finish up my third slice, I uh, cough awkwardly to get his attention. He's mid-bite, a long string of cheese connecting his snout to his half-eaten slice. So, um... Yes? How did you know? What? Uh, that I... That I was gay? Hearing the word uh, said so casually made me instinctively look around as if someone would uh, could be spying on us. Well, yes. From the way those uh, cops talked to us earlier, it doesn't seem like people are any more uh, accepting here. He leans back, taking a deep sip of wine before continuing. <laughs> well, I guess the simple answer is I went to college. I know, I know, it's cliched. But once I was able to get away from my folks and spend some time getting to know myself, getting to choose what I want to be instead of what was expected. It was suddenly all so clear. Women just weren't for me. Uh, men were. I see. I'm happy it was simple for you then. Yeah, I mean, wasn't it like that when you figured... Well, I mean, wasn't it like that when you figured it out? I tug at my collar nervously. I haven't exactly figured it out. I'm not gay, at least. I don't think that's the right word. He leans in, interested. Oh, do tell. I blush, somehow more embarrassed talking about this than kissing him. I've had relationships with women before, and loved them. Well, loved one. He nods, his tone still respectful. I see, so you like both men and women. Mark, I like everything. There's an awkward pause before he erupts in laughter. I cover my mouth in shame as he laughs. His laugh turns to a ragged cough, pushing it down with more drink. Mark! Sorry, sorry. That caught me off guard. I think I understand what you mean. There's a word for it, if it's uh, what I think it is. I stare uh, curiously and nod. Now... We know you can uh, love a man or a woman equally, yes? Right? Would you feel the same if you met one who uh, used to live life as the other? <clears throat> I think for a moment. I've never really considered it. And Jean was a man, but regularly dressed as a girl, and I found him equally beautiful with either gender's presentation. And I don't uh, think I'd love 
uh, Simon any less if her bottom half was uh, like either mine or Edian's. Yes, I'd feel the same no matter what gender they felt they were. <laughs> then you're a pansexual. Congratulations! I glance over to the uh, out of the kitchen at the uh, pans on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> that's 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 good. That's good. <clears throat> Not that kind of pan. All it means is that you have the capacity to <clears throat> to feel attraction to or fall in love with someone regardless of their sex or gender. I feel like some final piece of the puzzle's clicked in place. A word I'd uh, been desperate to find. <laughs> wow, so I am. I take his hand in mine and hold it to my chest. Thank you. You don't understand how long that had bothered me. He smiles softly, rubbing my chest gently. I'm glad, but remember, a word is just a word. At the end of the day, no one term can truly define you as uh, an individual, Josh. Gray. That's what I said. Uh, he chuckles and um, caught a <clears throat> coughs up a wine burp before he tastes our glasses. Takes our glasses over to the scene. With a uh, little time gone by, Mark was uh, now able to laugh at the uh, the bumps along the way. His smile lightens up the room, and I feel that uh, warm, safe feeling wash over me again. I just need context. That's all. Anyone in his position would be a little off sometimes. After we lost Sam, well, none of us were ever the same. No, it's cute. <laughs> okay. Uh, he comes back and cozies up to me, yawning. He nuzzles me into, the, into my chest, and I gently stroke his mane. The both of us are pleasantly buzzed. And it seems like a good time to start winding things down for the evening. <laughs> this might have been one of the best days of my life. Even if things are uncertain and scary at times, if he's here with me, uh, things will be alright. I'm starting to drift off with him still on top of me. He's uh, fallen asleep, rising and falling in time with, with breathing. Well, damn. We never made it to bed. Oh, well. Another night on the couch won't kill me. Oh. Uh. <clears throat> ah, young love. <laughs> you love to see it. I don't remember what voice I gave Virgil. Damn it. Oh. You're going to leave them be for tonight? How generous. Who the? Oh. It's just you. I figured they earned some, uh, <clears throat> earned some a good night's rest before things get. Well, it wouldn't be a fair game if they were plum tuckered, now would it? If you ask me, it's still quite unbalanced. But what's, <clears throat> but that's what I've come to expect from your playstyle. Careful now, boy. Come now, this was a joke. I'd like to make a wager then. All right. Let's hear it. I'm betting that the possum will fold early. Really now? Are you, uh, <clears throat> are you sure you want to bet against the house? Especially after you work so hard to win your own. I have a condition. What? Give me a piece of the board. Ah, I see now. That would be mighty interesting, would it? Something to distract him from that thing. Only then could it be a fair test of the boy's mental. Hmm. And what would be in it for you, son? What's in it for me? Why? To let, to let me pick it apart and examine it, uh, its contents, contents, piece by piece. 
Huh. You're a sick puppy, you know that. But all right, it's a deal. All hands are off the b off the table now. You try something funny, and all bets are off, son. Splendid. Well, then, I have work to do. I'll be seeing you soon, Mr. Gray. Oh my god. That was so good. What the hell? I'm so interested. I, I didn't think we would be getting scenes with Virgil outside of, like, um, Gray's perspective. You know? Uh, I'll go back to the main menu. That sounds that sounds good for a bit, just a little bit of discussion time, you know. Uh, oh, that was so, that was so nice. I I, I really like Mark. He's super cute. Uh, <laughs> but I'm so interested in everyone. Like, will I, will I have a potential shot at a relationship with everyone? Like, well, like what's what's gonna happen with that? And then, of course, there's the mystery plot. Like, what's what's the game? What's like Gray fighting against? How's how is everyone connected? I'm so I'm so interested, guys. It's so interesting. And Virgil seems like such a fun villain. Like, I'm I'm kind of not used to like a villain in these games, right? Like, Echo doesn't really have a villain. Smoke Room doesn't really have a villain. I didn't feel like, I didn't finish Adastra, but it doesn't feel like one there. I know that's, those are all Echo Project games, but you know what I mean. Uh, but like, oh, it's it's so, it's so neat. I, I, I'm looking forward greatly to the next build, but I'll, I'll see you around everyone.